What do you think is the one thing that differentiates successful people from the rest? Or what is the one thing that makes successful people successful? It might seem there isn't like one thing, but many, that might have some truth in it. However, they all come down to a single character or habit. If you want to know why most people would never leave the cycle of poverty, how to tell if a kid is going to be successful when he is just 4 years old, and what the rich parents teach their kids unconsciously that makes them successful, then stick around because we are going to answer these questions and many more. When we see a successful person, we tend to think that they might be smart, talented, or just pure genius. Of course, that's true to a certain extent. Still, the research shows that delaying gratification is the main reason what separates successful people from the rest of us. It is when you resist the temptation of an immediate smaller reward in order to receive a more substantial reward later. It's when you stop scrolling your Instagram feed and get back to work. Or stop watching YouTube and start getting ready for tomorrow's test or hit the gym at night instead of going to a party. The research shows that being able to delay gratification is a great habit. It leads to academic success, physical health, psychological health, and social competence. In the 1960s, Walter Mischel conducted an experiment at Stanford University in an empty room with nothing but two chairs and a table. The researcher presented four-year kids with a marshmallow and told the children that here is the deal. I am going to leave the room and you have two options. One, you can ring the bell that's beside the marshmallow at any point and eat the marshmallow or Two, wait until I come back about 15 minutes later and I will get another marshmallow so you will earn two marshmallows. Sounds like a good deal, right? The message was small reward now or bigger reward later. So what did the children choose? Some children broke down and ate the marshmallow. In contrast, others were able to delay gratification and earn the promised two marshmallows. Michelle found that children were able to wait longer if they used certain cool distraction techniques, covering their eyes, hiding under the desk, singing songs, or imagining pretzels instead of the marshmallow in front of them. Or if they changed the way they thought about the marshmallow, focusing on its similarity to a cotton ball rather than on its delectable taste. Here is where the exciting part starts. After many years, 1981, Michelle decided to check out on these kids to find out how they are doing in their lives and if the experiment he conducted can tell us something about these kids. The children who waited longer demonstrated a striking array of advantages over their peers. As teenagers, they had higher SAT scores, social competence, self-confidence, and self-worth, and were rated by their parents as more mature, better able to cope with stress, more likely to plan ahead, and more likely to use reason. They were less likely to have conduct disorders or high levels of impulsivity and aggressiveness. As adults, the high delayers were less likely to have drug problems or other addictive behaviors or get divorced. The experiment went as far as showing influence over their body mass. Each minute that a preschooler was able to delay gratification translated to a 0.2% reduction in body mass index 30 years later. On the other side, kids who couldn't wait long enough for the second marshmallow as teenagers struggled to make friends, had a difficult time handling stress, and struggled to stay focused. Does that mean that if, as a kid, you couldn't wait for a second candy, you were not going to be successful later in your life? Well, the answer isn't straightforward. It is a little bit more complicated. Based on Walter Mischel's research, self-control or being able to delay gratification is a muscle. You can train it like any other muscle on your body. You might not achieve a huge success instantly, but over the long run, you will be fine. Remember, the reward must have some value to you. Without a reward, that is meaningful. Providing delayed or immediate gratification serves little purpose as the reward is not a strong reinforcer or the desired behavior. 
In other words, if you want to delay gratification, make sure you pick a significantly bigger reward. Let's say you have decided to save money to invest, but then Apple releases a new iPhone that you eagerly want to buy. To avoid the temptation to buy the new iPhone, you have to make it crystally clear to your brain why saving that money is going to result in a bigger gratification later, such as financial freedom. But in 2018, Tyler Watts, who was inspired by Michel's experiment, decided to redo the experiment and found out that delaying gratification has more to do with the income of your parents. If your parents are rich, you are more likely to wait for the second marshmallow and end up successful later in life. While if you are born to a poor family, you are more likely to ring the bell and eat the marshmallow. What's used a much larger sample, 900 kids compared to 90 kids that Michelle used. And also more representative of the general population in terms of race, ethnicity, and parents' education. They included factors such as the income of a child's household to explain children's ability to delay gratification in their long-term success. He found little evidence for the idea that being able to delay gratification leads to better outcomes. But rather, the ability to wait for the second marshmallow has to do more with child's social and economic background. Therefore, that background, not the ability to delay gratification, is what's behind kids' long-term success. Here is the experiment. The kids whose mothers had a college degree and waited for a second marshmallow did no better in the long run. They didn't do better in school or in tests or even in their behavior. The same thing was found among kids whose mothers did not have college degrees. But when these two groups were compared together, kids from wealthier households waited for the second marshmallow did significantly better compared to the kids from low-income households. So, the researchers came to the conclusion that the poor kids' daily life holds fewer guarantees. There might be food in the fridge today, but there might not be tomorrow. So, there is a risk that comes with waiting. And even if their parents promise to buy more sweets tomorrow, often that promise gets broken out of financial necessity. Meanwhile, for kids who come from families with parents who are better educated and earn more money, it's typically easier to delay gratification because experience tends to tell them that adults have the resources and financial stability to keep their promise. And even if they don't end up getting the marshmallow, their parents will get them different sweets. There are plenty of other research that proves this. One of them is this book, Scarcity. Why having too little means so much. How poverty can push people to settle for short-term rather than long-term rewards. For poor kids, the second marshmallow seems unreal when a child has a reason to believe that the first one might vanish right under his nose. Many teenagers often growing up in poverty choose to work long hours in poorly paid jobs to support themselves and their family somehow. Despite barely covering the bills, the teenagers still splurge on payday, buying things like McDonald's or new clothes. Other research shows that low-income parents are more likely than wealthier parents to give in to their kids' requests for sweet treats. These findings illustrate that the poor parents try to indulge their kids when they can, while wealthier parents tend to make their kids wait for bigger rewards. An ice cream or a Snickers bar might seem foolish, but things like these are often the only indulgences poor families can afford. And for poor children, indulging in a small bit of joy today can make life feel more happier, especially when there's no guarantee of more joy tomorrow. It's something like a cycle of poverty that most people will never escape. If you have enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new around here, subscribe and turn on your notifications. Thanks for watching and until next time.